on the subheading the purpose of divine encounter the purpose of divine encounter like I said yesterday God does not entertain us God is not an entertainer whatever God does there is a purpose for it God is not wanting to you know make man to feel happy in the sense of you know entertaining him no whatever God wants to do he means it and whatever he means he will do praise master Jesus so God has a purpose for every person every person every person and when we talk of divine purpose we are talking about the total aggregate of the good acceptable and perfect will of God in a man's life family and even as a nation we are supposed to know as believers that the one who created us did not just create us to come to the world and then live and vanish. There is a divine purpose that he created us. And that divine purpose becomes your divine assignment. Amen? But your divine purpose and assignment cannot be fulfilled until there is a divine encounter. Divine encounter is what empowers you for your divine assignment so that Satan does not counter you. Everyone that will be born of a woman from after Genesis chapter 3 will have Satan try that person. Anything that will be born of a woman must go through the persecution, the insult, and the harassment of the serpent. What we know in Genesis chapter 3, the Bible said the serpent was more subtle than any beast of the feet which the Lord God has made. Amen? So anybody who is born of a woman must go through what I call serpentine testing temptation and persecution. We cannot wish away that as believers. Amen? See, no matter how you pray, something must happen to you. Your prayer does not stop bad things from happening. Amen? I know many of you will be shocked now. Just allow me to lay the foundation. Your prayer will not stop the things that are bad to happen. Your prayer will only lead you through it. Amen? Amen. Except, of course, that thing will want to go against the will of God for your life. God will stop it. But if it cannot go against the will of God or divine assignment, God will allow it. Because it is through the fullness of affliction, God calls his servants. It's not through prosperity and merriment. It is through the fullness of affliction. Trials, temptation. They will be rife on every hand. And sometimes we cannot understand. But let me tell you the truth. That is what makes us to know we are under the beam light of heaven. That is when God spoke to Isaiah to speak to the children of Israel and to speak to um, the king. He said, he said, listen, tell Israel, all that warm, warm Israel, call them warm. He said, when thou passeth through the fire, I will be with you. Now, he didn't say, you will not pass through the fire because I am with you. Is that what the Bible says? He didn't say, you will not pass through the fire because I am with you. No, sir. He said, when thou passeth, that means passing through temptation, is a must. In fact, let me tell you, it's a divine will of God so that you can be so rugged in your divine assignment. Because many of us will fail divine assignment because we have become weak. In fact, the Christians of today, if God were to line us up, we cannot fulfill 10% of our divine assignment because we have been rubbish 
by the gospel of materialism. Everything cannot be good. Everything cannot be well. Me and no go suffer. I no go beg for food. Brother, not every begging is a bad begging. There are some begging that train you so that when you have money, you can be given. You didn't just get what I just said now. There are some lack that God will bring your way so that when he supplies you with abundance, when you see a brother in need, your heart will be touched. So when you are going through your terms of fire or water, please know this. It is not the devil. It is God who is doing that. Amen? So be very careful. Your prayer you are binding and losing, you might be binding God. Father, this problem I'm going to, any, any power that is responsible, die. Ask God whether he's the one. Because before you fulfill divine assignments, you must encounter all kinds of satanic harassment. Satan must try you. Anyone that is born of a woman must be tried. Now, listen. God was the one that gave this, the devil that agenda. In Genesis chapter 3, he told the serpent, say, serpent, because you have done this, you are cursed above every beast of the field. And upon your belly you will walk. And I say, listen, serpent, you will bruise the heels of the seed of the woman. Amen? You must realize that it was through a woman sin came into this world and it was through a woman the Redeemer came. So the woman is the channel which God uses to, you know, bring certain things, the good and the bad. Serpent, through the woman sin came in. Through another woman, Christ, the second Adam, gave us redemption. Now, where am I going to? Many people have asked me, even until yesterday, people are still texting me, Pastor, can you help me and pray? I want to know what God wants me to do. You know, when I closed yesterday, they gave me some form of some people who, who wanted to see me. And I told them, no, 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 no. They said, Pastor, I, as I read one of them, I said, no, take, 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 take. Go and cancel them by yourself. Because one of them was saying, I want to know the will of God for my, mind, for my life. Now, let me tell you. Many of you are like that. I want to know the will of God. You can never sit down one place and know the will of God. That is a lie. Anybody who sits down, eh, in fact, you must be very, very, very gracious. God, God would have seen you to stand by grace, to in one shot give you what will you do in your life. Why am I saying that? I'm not saying God cannot do that. I'm saying that destiny is not that cheap where you sit down with somebody and they tell you everything you want to do in life and then you run with it. Even when Moses encountered God in the burning bush, he said, go and tell Pharaoh, let my people go. He said, where are they going to? He said, they are going to the land that is flowing with milk and honey. Did God show him the land? Did he know the land? If Moses knew the land, he would have gotten a shortcut. Remember from Egypt down to Canaan was 11 days journey. But because he never knew the land, he had to depend on the pillar of fire by night and the pillar of cloud by day. So God uses the thing you don't know to tell you to go so that when you stand up, he can lead you. But if you want to know before you stand up, you will never know. That is the way of God. In my, in my ministry, when I started, I knew this very fast. So I, I, didn't, I wasn't waiting again for somebody to tell me what God wanted me to do. Because you see, once you with the will of God, you must move. If you move from here, now you are going to my two. If you get to Barat, another kind of will of God will be revealed to you at Barat. When you think you are satisfied with that will, you discover it's not sufficient. You will trek to underbridge. When you get to underbridge, another revelation of the will of God will come to you. Am I talking to somebody here? Before you will get to my two, 
you must be getting the will of God drop by drop, bit by bit, until you come to the fullness of the knowledge of God. You can never, don't fool yourself, you can never get the will of God in one go. You will never. God does not do that. If God does that, you will not go. If God does that, you will spoil the will. God hide his will so that men can respect it. If it is known, men will abuse it. Have you seen that any time people know too much about you, they abuse you? You are no longer a surprise to them. Are, are you here? Something happened. So God hides his divine purpose. So you can never get it in one, in one counseling. You might get a little drop of it. Sometimes, let me tell you what God does most times. He will show you the ending. He will not show you how the road will be. He will tell you, my servant, I have called you to liberate the world, to go and preach the gospel, heal the sick, heal the blind. Before you will heal the sick, you shall go sick. I don't think I'm talking to people here. So you begin to fear God. This God who made you to heal people, eh, will, make you, will allow you to be sick so that you will appreciate when somebody says, I'm sick, you go to do you make you pray for them. One, one product that causes the gift of working of miracles and the gift of healing is compassion. When a man does not have compassion on people, God will never give him a passion for so. The Bible says, and Jesus was moved with compassion. If you have a healing gift and you know the story for a person, that healing gift will die. So this are the total agreement. Your, your purpose in life you cannot just sit down one day. You can go to seven days, 21 days fasting. You will never get it. God will just drop a little. He will just drop a small idea. Why he's doing that? So that you can move. So that you can trust in him. Do you know when we're in, in school, if you know a subject very well, when the teacher is teaching, you just the, you, you go just the play, you know? You will be like, are you, are you not here to say, I know the thing now, I know this, I know this, I know this. But the one that you don't know, that you want to know, you will pay rapt attention to it because you know if you fail it, you are failing woefully. So in the plan of God, there are three dimensions to it. In the will of God for divine assignment, there are three dimensions for it. Number one is the good. Number two is the acceptable. Number three, is the perfect. Number one, the good will of God. Number two, the acceptable will of God. Number three, the perfect will of God. Romans chapter 12, read from verse one. I just want to lay the foundation. So those of you who have been praying and say, God, show me my divine assignment, you can be able to appreciate what I'm saying. Romans chapter 12, read from verse one. Romans 12 from verse 1 it says I beseech you therefore I beseech you therefore brethren yes, by the mercies of God by the mercies of God that ye present your bodies that you do what? present your bodies please get this scripture I like emphasis because sometimes it helps us understand scripture that you present if you do not present your body, God cannot use your body. Your body first and foremost must be presented to God. Praise God. Is somebody catching that? Oh, yes. Because some people cry every day, God use me, God use me. But you don't present yourself to be usable. People cry, oh God, I want to be prayerful. I want to preach the gospel. But you have never presented yourself for evangelism. He said, I beseech you, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you do what? You yes. present. Now listen. Anything you present leaves you presently to the person you are presenting it to. Hello? Are you catching it? Now, this is a handkerchief in my hand, right? It's not a mantle yet. Until I bless it. It's my handkerchief. If I take it and give to this brother and I leave it, where is it now? Is it with me? Who is it with? 
is with you now. Now, for because it is with you now, you can use it. Right? Now, but if I keep it here and I'm telling you, use my handkerchief, use my handkerchief, how will you be feeling? You'll be confused. What will you be thinking in your mind? You will ask me, give me the handkerchief. So I can, you are telling me to use it, Abby? So you give me the handkerchief for me to use it. You cannot be with the remote of a TV and ask another person to tune it. Hello? You cannot be the, with the remote of a television and ask another person to change the channel. How do you want to do it? How does he want to do it? You are with the remote control and you are asking another person who is not with the remote to, to tune the channel. It's absurd. You are with your body and you are asking God to use it. So how can God use what you are holding? I don't think somebody's catching what I'm saying. How can God use what you are holding tight to? Something you are holding so tightly that you don't want to let go, but from your mouth is saying, God, use it, use it. God said, let it go. He said, no, use it. God said, let it go. He said, no, use it. God said, how won't use them? It's still in your hand. So what you need to do is to do what? Release it. So Paul said, I beseech you therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you give your body to God. As what? Don't give to God what is dead. <laughs> there are people who give God service that is dead. They are, they, are, they are giving God a service, but it's a dead service. Let me say this. Everything that, we, that has to do with divine assignment and divine encounter comes with time frame. Comes with time. Someone said time. There is a time, brother. If you want to give God your life, it will not be like 10 years ago. That time that you give your life to Christ, if it's not in the framework of the time allotted by divine predestination, you cannot do the things that you are supposed to do. Because every divine assignment and encounter has time frame. That's why Ecclesiastes says, Remember now thy creator in the days of thy youth. When the evil day cometh not, when you can say, I have no pleasure in them. A man who is 70 going to Bible school, what does he want to achieve? Huh? His grave. Is what? He will use it in the grave. But I say he will use it in the grave. You are a youth now. Go for evangelism, preach the gospel, sing in the choir. He said, no. My, my problem now, I want to marry wife. I want to marry husband. Now, as a, as a girl, you marry husband. Do you know your divine timetable changes? Do you know that? Okay, let me say this in this church so that some women will understand why if you have problem with your husband, and your husband say, don't come to spoken word, we'll tell you don't come will tell you, don't come. Some women ask, I ask, why are you saying this? Are you not supposed to encourage us to come? I said, no. I can encourage you to keep praying for him. I can encourage you to keep fasting and say, God, touch him. I cannot encourage you to disobey him. Because scripturally, the Bible says, any woman that is married to the husband, the husband has the right to disallow your vow before God. Hello? You see now? If your husband say, don't come to today Monday Bible study. See, if you cannot convince him, sit at home. See the way they look at me. If you know that if you come up a house, eh, on that bridge you fall. If you know that if you leave the house, you will sleep outside. That is not persecution, no. Use your sense. Obey him. Sit at home and tell him, sir, please now allow me to go next week. 
The Bible says your husband has the right to disallow your vow before God. Then if you are a girl, he says your father has the right to disallow your vow before God. So God allows your vow when your father allows it. I think people are not, they're not confused. By the way, I'm not talking about wicked men and women. <laughs> I'm not talking about wicked <laughs> that day. I'm talking about when all things are correct. Amen? So please, you must understand this. Even God said, if a, a lady, a young lady vows before me to do something and his father says, I will not allow you. God said, that vow that that girl has vowed, eh? that girl is not entitled to obey it because God is a God of order you cannot be under your father and grow a feather that is bigger than your father God is, not like, he is a God of order that's why sometimes you can find a pastor doing what is wrong eh? and you are murmuring God will come and punish you that is murmuring and leave the pastor who have done wrong because in due order God expects you to follow him not by what he has done mistake is by what he's preaching to you. Jesus told the, the apostles, say, listen, I want to tell you something about Pharisees. He said, anything they say you should do, do it. Today, we have young men who are cursed and they don't know it. Because they have entered enter message, they feel that they have the right to, to criticize anybody. So they will bring Apostle Suleiman on the table and they will cut him and they will, be, they will say, yes, we, have, we are righteous, we are judged, you are crazy, and never touch you. I told them, I said, listen, we must be careful with this Bible we are reading. See, the same Bible that gives you a liberty is the same Bible that puts you in bondage. The same Bible that says, go to the right, it's the same Bible that says, come to the left. When you do like, do like this, in the center, you will stay. So the truth is in the middle. I've seen some young men who are themselves very evil. Once it comes to servants of God, they have no fear because they think they are, con they, they are saying what is right. So God, God will support them. That is not how God works. God will never break the order. Even if the father is wrong, he will never break it. So, <laughs> Moses came and told the people, say, God said we should not marry from any tribe, from any nation, rather. Only our tribe. As he finished, now he go, <laughs> collect one. Come keep. When he keep, Aaron and Moses, Aaron and Miriam, you see this guy? He's not genuine. He will not make heaven. He will not make heaven. Don't tell me that. I'm standing by the word of God. And they carry the fight. God, God near Moses. Moses, you are taking too much upon yourself. The law you are making, you are breaking. How can you be a genuine man of God? Moses said, please, I did this for a purpose. Many of you don't know that Moses and the wives before that they were having issues. That's why Jethro had to come. The wife was complaining, Moses, you are too much on your ministry. And you are not, you are not giving me attention. So the father, Jethro, had to come. And told Moses how to divide the work. But her complaints had already made Moses to reject her. So Moses had to marry the wife that he loved. Now watch this. When they saw that wrong... They never knew whether Moses has prayed to God or had an intention. They started to blackmail him. And they came before him and said, you are taking too much on yourself, Moses. Who will you be? We too, we are prophets. Moses, we are from the same stomach. Oh. We, we, they come out prophets, then burn us prophets. Moses, do you know when you are, when crocodile for chopping, I mean, carry you. Who, who are you? Aaron, Aaron said, listen, I'm your spokesman. Even, not be God telling me I'm your prophet, so you must listen to me. As they were arguing, Moses kept quiet. All of a sudden, they heard the noise. The Shekinah glory was coming. 
And God said, Moses, separate yourself. I want to kill Aaron and Moses. Aaron and Miriam. He said, separate. As the anger of God was coming, their bodies started changing to lepers. Now listen to me. When your mouth is too big to correct people who have, who have relationship with God, be careful what you say. I have told you there is a Bible principle of correcting a pastor. You don't come to a social media and you curse everybody because you are from an entire message. You will reap it very soon. You, there is a Bible way of correcting a man. Especially a Christian. The Bible says if anybody is overtaken in a fault, you who are strong, you should restore such person with the spirit of humility, knowing fully where you too can be tempted. When you come with this with the air of self-righteousness, you're killing yourself. And I'm saying this without when I see people that somebody told me, Pastor Chris, you are not hard. You are not hard. Hard what? Is this is Suleiman my preaching? Is the Gila my preaching? I, am I called to preach in Gila? Am I called to preach Suleiman? Who am I called to preach? I'm called to preach Jesus the crucified, the resurrected. But people shit and they still have a right to think like that. When other people's things are bothering you too much, it is not righteousness. It is it is it is on on oh, me, oh, me spirit that is bothering you. Oh, me. It's not righteousness. It is it is spirit of you know some people, if something is happening here, they want to know. And it doesn't concern them. They want to what is happening? Why is why is this two people are talking? No, it could they bother you with it. Two people are talking in the choir. You could bother that one with the what are they even saying? What are they saying? When they close for why I say, come, which one are they discuss? I'm a boy. I'm a boy spirit. Have I, have I finished running my race that I'm calling Suleiman's name? It's not. And even if Suleiman does something that is wrong, the Bible says I should go to him first. When he rejects it, I will take another person to him. Then when he rejects, I should bring him to the church. This social media, you have become the chief judge of the council of heaven. Thunder goes to fire you. I think I needed to say that. Because all these small, small, small boys, I call them small, small boys. Because you have not seen anything in music. If God has not warned you, I said, This thing you are doing is wrong. You, you know, self righteousness does not allow you to see your own fault. Now, let me, let me say this with every humility. I saw a video. Of uh, Prophet Amos of um, Temple Ministry making a profound and profuse apology to Apostle Suleiman and Ewele. Somebody sent it to me, so I watched it and I sent it to some few people. I said, I'm going to watch you. This man, now being a servant of God, came to the altar and finished Suleiman, finished Ewele. Suleiman was the point of this in that day. And he went back because if you have the spirit of God, when you finish talking, you go back. Except you're not of God. The spirit of God, we know. You are going out of your divine assignment. Hey, hey, I didn't send you that. No man make it you another man's judge. You cannot be a judge to another man's servants. So Pastor Amos, Prophet Amos came back and on the television did an apology and said something that is worthy of note for every pastor and believer to follow. He said, Suleiman, me and you, we are brothers. I would have said something, I'm sorry. Then he even said, say well, I'm sorry. Because no one thing with, with some members, they will push you, you become the God of the God of all the whole pastors in the world. You are the corrector of the universe. Now you be devil to Jesus. The day fire will come for your own house. You will know that. Listen, listen. In this church, I can come out and criticize everybody. But I'm teaching you. Because when I criticize everybody, that's the spirit that you will carry. If there's nobody to criticize, we will criticize ourselves. I want one pastor. I said, Daddy, the way you are doing this thing. He go hunt back. Oh, he's hunting back. Because all the children he trained, they are all critical. When they didn't see anybody to criticize, they started criticizing him. And he'll be crying. Ah, what? 
It is what you give you get. The gospel is not criticized. The gospel is a message of love. So I, I think I told Tony, Tony sent him, I said, this is very, I said, yes. Let him go and, let Amos go and tell his gang and his small, small boys to come back and apologize to. I said, because it's him they are following. When I said that this sin is not godly, they said, because I want to hide something. Now that the Spirit of God has spoken to that man, it and some pastor, they go proud, but that man is not, not proud. He openly came according to the Spirit of God and said, I'm sorry. And that thing died. Look, his small, small deputy Jesus are there. Who their, who their brain have been washed? You have not met God. The man who met God now is apologize. Why not follow him and apologize? Go back and meet the people you have lied against. Those who you can say, I'm sorry. If you are following that man, now he has said that. Go back to the people who you have, who you have blackmailed. Tell them, I am sorry. But they will not do that. Because pride is in them. The truth is that God has not called you to judge anybody. Of scripture. Put yourself in the light of the scripture. See, church, if a brother, I don't know why it's not happening these days. When we're in the assemblies of God, I met assemblies of God when they're about to collapse, sorry, when they're about to grow. <laughs> I came in. In assemblies of God, if we pick somebody, they pick somebody, pastor pick somebody, you just fornicated. The women will not, will not eat that day. I don't know how many have attended assemblies of God. The women will not eat that day. They will be crying. Church go close. They go, they go, they lie down for water. They will be rolling, crying. They will be begging the pastor as if they are seeing Jesus. Did I saw, I was having to say, Have these people no man? Repentance. The women will be crying. If they see the brother, the brother will sit there. Who is the, in the last year? Is it Austin? <laughs> what Augustine is done, I swear it is done. Put with them suspend, I swear it is done. Put with them leg there to come up for church. That's where they sit down. That man will sit and he will give the offering last. Nobody greets him. Nobody talks to him. He is isolated. Now watch. The people, women will be crying for him to be changed. Because they know that he has a divine assignment, but Satan is fighting his soul. Paul said, deliver such a one to the devil so that his soul will be afflicted, so that he might be saved on the last day. But just watch in this church. Oh, sorry, not in this church. In that church. The moment somebody here, pen, pass or nobody will say, you are so, they are pending the person. You will hear it on the road. You, you know the chief when you are watching? You know the chief when you are watching? Now I'm running. Where is my back? You know, <laughs> <Nimura. laughs> you will wonder what is even making him to laugh. Somebody just committed sin. You are laughing. What? Where do we get the spirit from? A brother just committed fornication. A sister just committed. You are laughing. You didn't fall on the ground that somebody is going to hell. Some people come, suspend him, kill, crucify, kill him, kill him, kill him. This church will never do that. Kill him. What is yours? What kind of spirit do you have? Be careful, Lord. I will never, because of somebody is doing something, I will, I will tell you the truth of the Bible. If you like, for if you if you have a critical spirit, let me tell you the truth. Eh? Let me say this with all honesty. You cannot criticize more than William Abraham. William Brown was so critical, not because he was, he was doing it bad. He felt the sin of his generation and it pained him in his heart that America would derail out of the plan of God. So he was hitting them, hitting them. One day he cried, he said, God, it seems I am now having a critical spirit. Because critical spirit is dangerous. You will not see that sister that is needing salvation. All you'll be seeing, kill him. Crucify him. Remove him from there. When you remove him, have you have achieved divine assignment on that person's life? That's how it's no. I don't know if somebody's catching this. 
This is not good Bible for those who are having the spirit. True. If anybody in this church, I tell you, yesterday I was I with, with some certain people in my office. As I came to church, see, I got down for this altar. I was with people. Some of them had cases that I will, I will kick them from here to Yanoba. And they opened up to me. Of course, when you come and lie, you know. They opened up to me. The person said, even, even thinking I would be very, very, very critical. I would start shouting. The Lord told me, how will you solve this problem? I said, God, you know, give me wisdom. Because it's, it's, it's dirty. But I judge, I am not a judge of this world. God has called me to redeem. It is when I finish that work on you, when you are not ready, I throw you away. But if I have not done that work, I have no reason to, to speak against it. That's why many of us need to know, any brother where you see commit sin, go to him direct and talk to him. Sit there, restore his soul, because the trumpet can sound any time. Now, please, I want to say this. It's different from discipline also. Discipline in the church should be maintained. But discipline should be at the instance where the person sees the wrong. I have done wrong, okay. Because it's, it's public, see what you do, see what you do. It's not to kill him. It's to make him restore. Now, so you don't get it, it's just okay, we are covering sin. No, I'm not saying covering sin. The truth is that sometimes we have pulled people away who have divine assignments. And God can no longer use them because we have taken them away. Now, I, I was telling Favor something. I said, listen, Favor, if it was in our own time, David, the man of God, the man after God's heart, eh, is in our own generation. Maybe he's the pastor of um, Besheba ministry. You understand? Just use that word. Besheba ministry. And you had prophecy that God said, this is a man after my heart. And everybody carried everywhere. David, 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 David. You remember David's life? They said, Saul killed in his thousand. David killed in his ten thousand. The guy was reigning. He was a reigning prophet. Now, one day, you just hear that he has committed adultery with Bathsheba and killed the husband of the wife. This anointing. Hey! Now, whoa! Who are Diego? I tell you, if David were to be in our time, many of us here, you will not regard him as a man of God. Lie, lie! Even if he fornicates, why not kill? Is it not wrong to kill? Fear God, though. God is not thinking like your, like your brain. Do you know? Some people say, see? Some people say, Pastor Chris, but God came to warn him. Do you know when God warned David? God warned him almost more than two years after. Because the child was born. The child grew. So it will be more than two years. So God waited for him for two years to repent. If God is slow in mercy, who are you to mess men? Be careful. Balance your spirit. Anything you are telling somebody that will make him cry, make that thing to draw him back to God. So that his soul can be saved. Maybe you might be the soul winner of that person. Can I ask a question? If David were to have a ministry today, one pastor will come on the altar. Praise the Lord. I want to talk something today. You see, Bathsheba ministry. Fear them, oh. Fear them. Fear them. They are not of God. You dismiss a whole soul that Jesus bought because of one fault, because you feel you are more righteous. You can never forfeit divine assignments. There's a day the angel of God appeared to, to Peter and showed him unclean animals. And Peter opened his mouth to See the danger of God. God showed him unclean animals and asked him to eat. 
What do you expect Peter to say? What do you expect to say? No, we know it. No, because from a child, they have taught them not to eat it. It is a law in Israel that you don't eat unclean animal. So Peter was right to tell the angel, I will not eat. For, he said, for I have not done this. The angel became angry with him for saying, I will not eat. When it's in the law of God for him not to eat. Now, why? The angel was angry because he was not sensitive in the spirit. If he was sensitive in the spirit, he will remember Jesus said, I make you fishers of men. It's not to go and catch fish in the sea. The word fishers of men is not to go and catch fish in the sea. It's to convert to. So once you are now a fisher of men, as you see those animals, it was representing men. He was not sensitive. And the angel got angry. I said, are you calling the things that God sanctified unclean? He said, I didn't know. He said, now there's somebody who is waiting for you. He's an unclean animal, but we have made him clean. Go to Joppa. You find one Cornelius. He has been praying. He's full of the Holy Ghost. Hey! <laughs> Finally, a brother, is it the prophet Hosea? If you were to be here, And the man just came, say, Praise the Lord, church. Praise the Lord, church. God say, I should marry her lot. So my wedding will be on the <laughs> on Sunday. <laughs> man of God, who is your wife? That one waiting for booze. Pastor, no, who is what is her name? I mean that one way to see where you stand for a junction. Somebody will just turn back. He, is, he has never been a man of God. Get out! All these people that are deceiving us. He is a man of God. He will not marry a shower. What light, what fellowship has light with darkness? You will not know what it is. That person you call darkness is even lighter than you. Because in the divine assignment of God, God is already seeing him as a converted bride. For the book of life was written before the foundation of the earth. Glory, hallelujah. Be careful. Be careful. This ministry, this ministry, bring them as they, as they are. Bring them, let them come as they are. But they will never live as they came. The word of God is quick and powerful. Sharper than any two-edged sword. Let me tell you. This day, sir, people don't hear the word of God again. They don't hear the thing where you de- the life where they live. It is your life that you live. It's your life. People are converted now again. Nobody. We are going back to the feeding of the five thousand with loaves of bread, and they convert people now. You got to your point. God will speak to you because. It is a divine assignment. But now, let me get back to it. Divine assignment, you must present yourself. Stop hiding yourself from God. Stop saying, I don't have the power. Listen, if God gives you a power to do something, you will boast about it. If you know you are a good talker, then you are a teacher. God has not called you to teach. You have called yourself by your own ability. But when God calls a man who does not know how to talk and make him a teacher, then that man will say, it is not of him that we let. Moses was a stammerer. And God said, I will make Aaron your prophet. But there was no day Aaron prophesied to Moses. Moses was still Aaron's prophet. Because the day he answered God's call, God removed stammering from him. There is a divine assignment. Only divine encounter. But you must present yourself a living sacrifice Holy, Mike, take your Bible, take your Bible. Holy and what? Acceptable. Holy and what? Acceptable. Something can be holy and yet not acceptable. Mm. Catch this revelation. People think as they the holy. See, see, see people, very funny. I have never, me? No man don't cross my leg. <laughs> me? Hey. I have never stolen somebody's money before. So you, you have the air of salvation. No. 
It's not by works of righteousness, but by his grace alone. It is not by works of righteousness, but by his grace alone. It's not by works of righteousness, but by his grace alone. We are complete in him. Nothing that you do. If men never cross you, that does not give you a cross to heaven. We, we want people to present themselves holy. But your holiness is as filthy rag. Holiness is not a clutch. Holiness is not a lifestyle. Holiness is the life of God being given to a man that is lifeless. You must be holy. Then when it is holy, it must be it must be it must be church the eight sons of Jesse standing before okay the seven sons of Jesse standing before the prophet Samuel what was wrong with Eliab what was wrong with Eliab what was wrong with Elishama what was wrong with other children in fact Samuel by his natural ability so Eliab said, this, this is surely. He said, this is surely. This is surely. This is certainly the Lord's anointed. This is a choice of God. God, God so he said, where? Who are you talking about? He said, look at him. The guy is built. He was choosing according to the order of Saul. Saul was a sign of rebellion. So God gave them stature man. But when God wants to choose his own, he gave them the stature of the spirit. Saul was a physical statured man. David was a statured man in the spirit. And the one who is statured in the spirit must be according to the will of God. Watch it. All of seven of them came, nobody got selected. And some are like, what just happened? God, these handsome, tall, muscular boys. Did I come to the wrong house? He said, no, you are in the right house. It's the house of Jesse. Ask him again. Is there any other son you have? He said, Jesse, just said the Lord, do you have any other son? He said, ah. I get one. Oh. <laughs> this one. No, 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 it cannot be him. It cannot be him. It cannot be him. It cannot be him. Someone just go on that place. I have, I, got, I have one, my brother. It's Jesse too. Go and go to his house, not my own house. He said, do you have another? Go and fetch him. Everybody walk, they fetch David. <laughs> Everybody walk there gallantly. But David was fetched. You know what they fetched him? Go and break. Drag him come. And the Bible described David in a very wrong way. He said he was rudy. You know what the word rudy means? His appearance is jaga jaga. He was a full, full okay. He was a full and he man. He was, he was, his clutch, nothing to be desired. See David walking before Samuel. He was still carrying two sticks. Man of God, man of God, he called me. Man of God, he called me. He was putting his mouth. When Samuel saw him, Samuel was like, then this must be the wrong house. Then this, this cannot be the guy. This must be the wrong house. Ah, as he was thinking, he heard the voice of God. Carry your oil and pour it on his head. Eliab was good. Holy boy. Because their father Jesse was a holy man. But it was, he was not acceptable. So let the words of my mouth and the meditations of my heart be acceptable in your sight. Oh Lord. So let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in your sight, O So you can see God. Something can be holy but not acceptable. Because the holiness does not come from God. Any holiness you achieve that is not from God cannot be acceptable. That's as I said, our, our self-righteousness is as a filthy rag.
covering your hair and doing all those things is good. It's as, that's how a Christian should behave. But if you think because you throw up your earring, you are going to heaven, you end up in hell. It's a big mistake. It's an error. The earring should not be thrown away because other people are throwing it. It's by conviction. You know this thing is wrong. You throw it away. Take it out of your life. You don't want to be corrupt. But some people are following those who are following. That's why if they change church, spoken word, they drop the earring, put them for bag. If they go Omega Fire, they bring the earring, put them again. If they leave Omega Fire, enter deeper life, they throw away the earring, put them for bag. Until they join Cherubim and Seraphim. That's why you are fooling yourself. Because you think those they are no holiness. Now, so Mike, I say if you stand up, are you tired? You want to marry on Sunday, you are sitting down. Can you imagine Mike? He's not tired. He said, present your body. A what? A living, a living sacrifice. sacrifice. Holy and acceptable. acceptable. Unto God, which is what? Your reasonable service. That means there is an unreasonable service. Mm. An unreasonable service is when you are serving God, but it is not holy and it's not acceptable. Let me close. I think I'm getting late now. You see the truth. That's why anytime you are working for God, be careful. You have double judgment. Anything you do, they say, come and do coordinator. You say, I know if you stand today, I beg, I beg, no disturb. I beg, I beg, I beg. You have killed yourself. The day you say you want to sing the choir, tiredness, no day there. They didn't add tiredness in it. They didn't add, uh, I, cannot, I don't feel like singing today. Is there a day that you don't feel like living, but you, you didn't die? But a day will come, you feel like I'm, I cannot sing before my, my God who gave me the mouth to sing. Be careful! So your reasonable service must be holy and acceptable. Now read the next verse. And I hit it very plainly. So people will get us from here and begin to say, God, show me your good, perfect, and acceptable will of God. Go ahead, brother. Verse 2. Verse 2. And be not conformed, be to, not this conformed world, to this world, but be ye transformed, but be ye transformed by the, renewing of, by your the mind, renewing of your mind, that ye may prove. Now listen, that you may be, com be not conformed to this world, but be ye what? Transformed. Transformed. So how does transformation comes? Transformation comes by renewal of the mind. That means transformation comes by renewal of the mind. That means renewal of the mind is informing the mind the right thing. So information leads to transformation. All right. Say so be ye renewed, be ye transformed rather by the renewing of your mind. Now, if your mind is not renewed, these three points I've mentioned, you cannot get it. When your mind is transformed by renewing it, what will not happen, brother? Read it. That ye may prove. So when your mind is renewed, you'll be able to prove what is. What is. That good. That good, number one. And acceptable. Acceptable, number two. And perfect will of God. Somebody say good. Somebody say acceptable. Someone say perfect. How many of them? Do you know something can be good but not acceptable before God? From what I've taught you now, do you know something can be good but it's not acceptable before God? Jesus was standing in the church I don't know whether he's the teacher of that day. He got close to the offering boss. And this big, big boys, top, top man, men, politicians, were coming with their offering. And they were dropping big, big. When they drop it, the, the, the thing will sound inside the offering boss. It will sound, you know, like something drop. Not go, go, go. It's team. And the priest might be there. Offering not that today. Offering not. Today is very good. Then one ragged, haggard, tattered, battered woman came with coins and dropped it as she dropped it. The teacher do 
Instead of Jesus to say, take your offering and go back, go, 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 go back with your currency. Jesus opened his mouth and said, out of everybody that has given here, this woman has given the best. They will have laughed him. This guy, this guy, Jesus will not get anything. I, I just dropped 10,000 in offering. I just dropped 100,000. Jesus said, no. Let me tell you why this woman's offering is the best. He said, this woman gave all that she has. Now watch. The other people that gave were their offering bad. It was good, right? Was it acceptable? No. Why wasn't it acceptable? Because every offering is good to God. Why wasn't it acceptable? Because it was not done from your offering can be given and not acceptable. Your tithe can be given. No, after you finish murmuring about tithe, you come and give us tithe. Or after you stole somebody's money, you do somebody, you fornice somebody, Yahoo Plus, then you come and drop your tithe. It is good or it's not acceptable. You must know this truth. Every good thing you do cannot be accepted by God. So, the Bible says, it is good that a man should not be alone. Right? Is that Bible? Is that scripture? If you don't know, come on Sunday, you see Mike, you know that it's not good for Mike to be alone. After that Sunday, you see Mike will change. As in a fat like this. Just watch, after on Sunday, you see what will happen to him. Since I know Mike, Mike is not fat. As being legged, legged. After Sunday night, you see what will happen to him. Now watch. It is good that the man must marry Abi. In fact, the Bible says, He that findeth a wife, findeth a. Now watch. You can. You, wait, wait, but I never quote the scripture. Let me go back. You can find a, a wife, and yet that wife is not acceptable. She is a good thing, you know? Not every woman is acceptable for you. You can marry your debt. I was asking, I was seeing a woman, they were asking the woman, say, why, why did you kill him? He said, I just verse. He just made me a verse. So I just carried a knife. I don't know what happened to me. I just shook him, shook him. I didn't want to kill him, oh, but I just shook him, shook him. I, okay, I don't want to kill him. Oh. Is that the wife? She's a wife, but she's not acceptable. There's a woman that that man that woman, a man that woman would be with. She will not try that nonsense. She won't try that nonsense. Not every woman is good for you, because she has pointed nose, and her breast has not fallen, and everywhere is is, is good, smooth. You are rushing. You might just be rushing to your death. And let me tell you the truth. Because she's in this church, praying like this. <laughs> you? And that's his face. Wow. Holy Ghost. Maraba. Ma, ma, ma. Holy Ghost. Hey! See anointing. See anointing. Hey! If I marry this one, eh? We go to, we go to speak in tongue. We go to stretch. We go to stretch. We go to stretch. We go to stretch, they go. When you stretch your life, you know, shaking... <laughs> You know a shaking head is different from reality. That thing, what they made of no shake head. If he tell you for mount, if you oh. <laughs> so you must know that there is a good will that is not accepted. Do you know Cain gave God the good sacrifice? but it was not accepted. 
Not every good thing you should be going for. Some people should not have any business riding a car. Till you will die, you will never ride a car. It's not a bad prayer. It's God who did it like that. Because you can, the day you buy a car, you enter on that trailer. Continue to work off your leg, your leg and live to 90 years. Now for you to enter enter car and, and then live 25 years or 30 years or 50 years. It's not every good thing that is acceptable. Let me give you an example. The Lord said, Saul, you must go to the Amalekite for today. I have remembered her sin that she did to Israel. You shall utterly destroy the Amalek. Leave nobody, animals, nobody should be alive, destroy. Now Saul, when they saw big, big Fulani cars with a horn ranging like a Rinoko tree, he said, come on, do we have enough sacrifice for God? He said, no, the car, we, we have to order them again. He said, see, take this one, take that one. What does he want to use it for? To sacrifice to God. Sacrifice to God, is it a bad thing? It is good. But that sacrifice is not acceptable. That's when I see some people rushing. They want to answer the call of God. The call of God, they won't hungry you. The call of God can call you to glory. The call of God, you are rushing, putting your head is like, can call you to glory, can kill you. So, take this one, let's go and sacrifice to God. God would have said, okay, he meant well, he meant well now. He meant well. Ah, he wants to sacrifice, he didn't give it to the devil. He meant well, he meant well. He meant well. Your meaning well does not mean it's acceptable before God. So every day you must pray. So let the words of my mouth and the meditations of my heart be acceptable in the sight. say so that you may be able to prove that which is good acceptable and perfect brethren if you are here in this church today and you have been looking for the will of God I have categorized it now I've not talked about the second and the third very well on Sunday we'll talk about it do you see everything that you want to do for God though it were good do you see it and say father this thing I want to do, is it acceptable? Now, if something is acceptable, does not make it perfect. There are things that are acceptable before men, they are not perfect before God. So anytime you are doing even your business, try and inquire by divine encounter. Say, Father, I know people are selling shoes people are selling this and they are making money. Father, is it good? Then, is it acceptable? Then, is it perfect? So that you don't fail God. At the end of the day, you know what will happen? You say, God, I have worked for you. God says, you have not worked for me. He say, uh -uh, I have worked for you. He say, you have not worked for me. He said, God, why are you not there when I was doing all this good, good thing? He said, you didn't do it for me. Because it's not my will. It's not my perfect will. Some people go and do pastor because it's a good thing. It's an acceptable thing. But you have to ask God, say, Father, is it your perfect will that I be a servant of God? Dickens Stephen was not an overseer of a church. But he was better than many pastors. As God, it is in my generation when somebody hear a sound eh, of a gunshot that God just shot. He's calling me. Where is he calling you to go? To start church. That's all they know. So you find that everybody wants to start church. They want to just get the feeling. So 
When you tell them, no, have you asked? They say, no, Pastor, God said He wants to use me. Didn't God use Judas? Ask him, what do you want me to do? What do you want to use me to do? Today, everybody's arising. Eh, me to have called, me to have called, me to have called. What you are calling yourself into might destroy you. In fact, some, of, some people have seen, all they want is their picture to appear on poster. You know, one day, when we started this ministry, there was nothing like poster and this. And I remember that, that me and Daniel went to do poster. God wants to invite people. You see, we should do poster. So, okay. We went to first tag. And they asked, I don't know what Daniel remember. They asked us the name of the church. We don't get the name. Of. It, was, it was shocking to the person who was printing. Uh, what's the name of your ministry? Eh, yeah, true. Hey. I'm telling you. This one. You are still under a pastor. You have written a name. Carpet of Star. International Ministry. You are still under a person. What is wrong with you? Is it a name that is important in your call? Is it a name that is important to your call? You are still under a pastor. You have already, got, you have already done uh, logo. You have done logo. This logo, how you going to go? You don't know. I'm asking, is it, is it the priority? Is it not to encounter God first? Then, the Lord knows that way through that will, darkness. All I have to do is to follow. If you don't locate that God, who knows the way through, and you go to the wilderness, go, go, kill you. Now, Libya, waka, you waka. Libya, waka, people need to survive them. Now, Libya, waka, you waka. Now, now there's that you follow one go, one go Europe. You will drink your peace. You will drink your peace. Because God didn't tell you to move. Even if he called you, ask him, should I go? David never lost any battle because any time he wants to go to battle, he does not say, I'm a strong man, I've never lost any war. He said, God, should I go? Will I pursue? Will I overtake? Will I recover all? That is a man who knows the good, acceptable, and perfect will of God. And we got there. It was in that place we chose the name, Abi. Remember the name we chose? Voice of Victory. Huh? That was the first name. Voice of Victory. It was in first time we want to print. When we started printing in this church, one day God told me, what are you doing on the road? <laughs> God told me, what are you doing on the road? I said, I'm not on the road, I'm in my house. He said, you're on the road. <laughs> I said, I'm not on the road. He said, what are you doing on the road? You're on the road. I said, I said I'm not on the road. <laughs> he said, your, your poster is on the road. Ew! God asked me, is it by that thing that you put there that I will call people to you? Or you are opening this church by Acts chapter 2. And the Lord added to the church. I mean, Acts chapter 2 or so. And the Lord added to the church such that you be saved. You see me at the do banner. I don't get time. I don't get time for banner. People say, because uh, you know what should they use? You don't need banner. How many banner did Peter do? How many, how many banner did Paul do? Can I tell you the truth? Anywhere the carcass is, there the ego shall gather. Evening service in this whole of America is dead, dead and buried. It's only in this church you come and see evening service. Morning service in church except Sunday is dead. It's on Thursday you come and you see people full here. Because anywhere the carcass is, I'm not saying it can be only here. If the pastor realizes what they are doing, God will lead them. And God told me, you don't need all this all these things. It was when we went to fast in the camp at your search. The Lord said, the name shall be spoken word. If I remember, Daniel, I even called some people with the counsel and I said, suggest name. See me. 
Some people suggest. Oh God, oh God. It was in the camp. God said, it is the spoken word. For it will be the lifting up of many and for the fall of many. That's how God gave me the camp. I came back, I was praying to them. God said, it is the lifting up of many and the fall. Why would my ministry fall? People say, yes. Anyone who fights it falls. Anyone who supports it rises. I had it clear. And when I finished from Yanosash camp, the next program I didn't know how to do it. God said, I just had a voice in my back. Move it to Baras. From Yanosash, I move it to Baras and it has stayed in Baras because your location determines your location. Why are you coming to that place? Because you see people with a drive car. You can be there. Those people who are driving car will not even see you. When you come to your ship, your ship must hear your voice. That I'm telling them, I'm the territorial commander of a job. It is not boast. It was given to me by revelation. When I speak, people will hear it. It's not pride. If God gives you a job too, he will move you. It will move you. It's not, it's not you choosing where you want to be. Don't choose where you like. Because if I have chosen my first act, I can't remind you from, from ever since. But God said, no! Because there's a good, there's an acceptable, and there's a perfect will of God. Cool down. The perfect will of God for your life does not come easily. You will walk and walk and walk and walk and walk and walk before it will show up. Because you know why? We must run to the rock that leaded. No matter the roughness of the road. The road might be rough and narrow. But when you walk with God, he will see you through. He will see you through. I have come too far to take a backward step. I have journeyed too long to go back again. What are you thinking of me? It will not stand. The person who concretized me, the person who solidified me, is not planning to uproot me. Your wishes are mere wishes. They are fallacy of the highest order. Because the one who rooted me cannot be uprooted. I cannot be uprooted. Before this church was born, I fasted many years. Many years I fasted. You think God will just uproot it like that? I'm not saying God, if God chooses to stop it, it's his own business. And one thing I want to tell you, if God stops spoken word or joy here, I will go to Muwo. We, we will start on that one there. We go to first act. We will start on that one there. We can even fly to Ghana. We will start on that one there. I'm telling you, if so wishes God. Nobody knows God's plan, no. God, God is, he behaved mysteriously. So when you are following him, be calm, be calm. Tell yourself, I am not in a hurry. Anywhere he leads me, I will follow. Somebody say hallelujah. hallelujah. Rise up on your feet and let's pray. Thank you, Jesus. This this message is for our reborn again.